Candace, and I'm with Happy Catastrophe. I'm excited that you are here today. Uh, today is my February 2024 finished pages. I'm a little late, story of my life. When have I not been getting this out to you? It's March 7th now. Uh, I'll be editing. It'll probably be out by the 8th or 9th. So let's get in and see what I did. Now, my goal is always to do 10 pages. But I actually did, I have a little wrap up here. I actually did 17. Wonderful. I had six of those were color by numbers, which is more than I usually do. I just really got into some Hatchet Hero color by number stuff. I didn't do any PDFs, although that was on my plan. I was going to. And untouched books were four. So that is fantastic. I'm still rocking away on those untouched books. Um, I did four buddies, which is great. I limit myself to five because after that, it, it just gets to be too much for my month. I did a group buddy page. I did one of those. And I had a couple of tags. So I purchased two books this month. Um, I de-stashed none. I'm pretty down to what I want. I, I'm, I don't know what else I would de-stash. I think I'm down to the core books that I really love. Um, I de-stashed all of my AI books um, and any books that I just didn't like and just wasn't coloring in. Um, everything else, there might be one or two more that if I don't color in this year sometime soon, I'll have to get rid of because I'm not coloring in it. And I donate those. Uh, my total books are now at 139, which of course is up to. And my untouched are 35. So my total percentage of untouched is 2517 which, for those of you that don't want to do the math, I already did it with my calculator. That's down 2.6%. So I am still on the downhill getting rid of those untouched books. My goal is that this year, at the end of this year, all of my books will be touched in. That's a bit. I still have 25% of my stash to go. But I think I can do it. Um, especially if I'm doing four or five a month. I don't know. I didn't do that math. And I don't think I want to. So let's not let's let's just say that I probably will get it done, even if the math doesn't work out. Math lies. Now, of the planned pages, I did not do a February plans video, but I did have some pages planned, and I'm pretty happy that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them happened. Um, and then I did, you know, ten others that weren't on the list. Um, but I did get those. I did get the most important ones done and I'm really excited about it. So let's see what I did. So let's start with this amazing book. This was my first page in this fairly new book by Fabiana Atanasio, Mythographic Fairy Wonderland. I have a lot of mythographics and mythagorias and they are my favorite book to color in. So I tend to do one a month anyway, but I'm gonna make sure that I am doing one a month going forward just because um, sometimes I get down rabbit holes and on other books and I'm, and it, whenever I come back to a mythographic, it's like, oh, okay, I know how to color in this book. So they're my easy coloring books for me and um, I need to remember to keep them in my coloring list every month because they provide such uh, a happy moment for me. I, you know, I spend a couple days on the page, sometimes just one day. Um, and I really enjoy it because I do it all in alcohol markers, which is my favorite medium. But this one was a buddy with a fantastic new friend I have. And that is Coloring Jen 1975. I'll put her Instagram handle here. Jen and I just started doing buddies together and I really enjoy it. Her pages are beautiful. So let's look and see what we did. We did, and if you haven't seen this book, oh, look up some flip throughs because it is just stunning. I mean, Fabiana kind of outdid herself on this one, I think. We did the snail page. So um, let's look first and see what Jen did. Now, while we're looking at this, make a note of my color palette and then her color palette. So let's look at that. As you can see, we did a lot of the same colors. To me, it's almost like it's the same world is just Jen's is by day and mine is by night which is interesting because Jen finished hers first and sent it to me 
And then I was like, wow, this is great. And I'll get on mine soon. And then like a week later, I started mine. Now, I don't know if her blue snails, blue green snails in, subconsciously influenced my coloring as well. I think I had always seen the snails in this image to be blue, but um, it might have. So uh, <laughs> I basically made a night scene of Jen's day scene. So let's look at what I did. Thank you, Jen, so much for coloring with me. We have more buddies to together planned. Um, I used all alcohol markers. There's nothing else in this except some, um, some glittery uh, paint. This is a watercolor paint by Brutus Monroe. Let me get it for you. It's these here. I belong to um, monthly uh, kits that I get. And I don't get one from Brutus Monroe. I get one, I used to get one from Simon Says Stamp, but I don't get those anymore. I now get the Hero Arts card making kit. I get, I make cards. I, that's how I got into this YouTube adventure because I have um, cards that I make that I sell on Etsy. And at one point, Brutus Monroe, I'm on their mailing list. They were having a closeout sale. So I got these. Now they are a liquid pigment. So they're not really watercolor. Let me open one for you so you can see it. They're super liquidy. See that? But also kind of thick too. Let me see so I can. How can we see that? Here we go. So they're, they're kind of liquidy and they're kind of thick. And I put this, a little dollop of this on a palette and then picked it up with a brush. And I put that on her, on the shiny bits, which is basically just the gilded cage thing that she's in. So I think I actually, this was the one I did use. I think the penny was the one I did use. Um, they're interesting. They take a couple coats. Uh, I wouldn't get them over a metallic watercolor or a metallic wash. Um, I'm not actually, I think they're too thin to do anything with other than splatter effects maybe. Um, they're too thin to really paint with, but they're, they're just kind of an odd consistency and in-between consistency, and I haven't yet figured out what they're really good for. So this is the first time I've ever used it successfully. And so I made that shiny, but the rest of it is all alcohol markers. So I worked a long time on those lanterns, figuring out the right color combination and finally got it. Um, and I made the, the, see, you can see some more of those shiny. That's just done with the tip, very, very tip of the watercolor brush, tipped into that metallic pigment and just dabbed in little dots. I just made it all over. The snails I did in kind of an aqua blue scheme. So there's two or three different alcohol markers on these snails, but um, I wanted them to be more aqua than anything because I wanted them to bring in the green of her. I knew she was to be green. Now, Jen colored her spots, which was fantastic. And she colored them the same as she colored on the snails. I totally ignored the spots. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't really see them. But she, um, and she has a little bit of pencil shading. And I don't even know if I wrote it down, it's so little. Um, no, no, I didn't even write down what it was. It's just a little bit of shading where the, for the green around just to accent the green. I didn't want to put more alcohol on there. But everything else is uh, um, alcohol markers. I really liked this. Um, here is a picture, I wanna show you though the difference, what the difference just a color change can make. So I originally made this picture and I put the clouds, you see how the clouds here are got like a blue and gray going around to indicate the clouds. I had made that a brighter color palette and here's a picture of that. I sent that to Jen, but then looking at it in a photo, I got to thinking that the clouds were competing with the lanterns. Do you guys agree? It seemed like it, they were breaking up the lanterns. They were, they were drawing my eye because they were bright as well. And I thought, gosh, they, I would really like to make those fade more in the background so the lanterns pop out. So what I did here is I took 
one of my brand new <laughs> Thule Art paint pens, acrylic paint pens, and just went over that yellow and pink and stuff, just went over it with paint pens, and that covered it up really nicely. And then looking at it, it, it works, don't you think? Don't you think it's better? That was such a small change between this and this. And I think it, it works so much better because I really wanted the lanterns to be a spotlight in it. I, want the, I wanted them to be the only warm, bright thing while everything else is cool. And so I really like it better, but it was really fun having, the, having taken the two photos. Normally I would have looked at it and said, oh, I don't like it and changed it, but not have taken a before photo. This time, fortunately, I thought it was done. Took the photo, sent it to Jen, and then looked at it on my phone was like, I don't really like that. So it was just a tiny little change, but it made a big difference. So sometimes if you don't like something that you've done, if, if the whole picture just isn't working for you, I, I really recommend taking a picture of it and definitely sleeping on it, you know, put it away, but take a picture of it. And then the next day, look at that picture. And sometimes what's wrong with it can just pop out at you like that did. I didn't see it before. And I think I did. I think there was a day I sent it to Jen and then I went to bed. And the next day I was looking at it, I think is how it went. Not sure. Something like that. And then the um, the border here is just a washi tape. Uh, it's crazy and interferes with the picture. It was not a great choice. I was like, oh, it has almost all the same colors. And so I put it on there because I was too lazy to paint the border because I like to paint. the. I like to have the borders, not the white paper. But I don't care. It's flashy. It's shiny. It's still pretty. And I actually, this is probably my favorite picture of the month. Thank you, Jen, for coloring with me. It was so much fun. I look forward to our buddy this month. All right, let's see what else I did. All right, you all know <clears throat> I love this book. And I have recently been, uh, I've colored a lot in it. And recently, as I showed you, in a recent photo, in a recent video, was that I've been putting cardstock on this side because I use mediums that bleed through. Now, this was my first page ever done, and it's done all in paint. Um, but, and this is paint as well. But I started switching to mediums that were like alcohol markers that bleed through. And so I didn't like opening it up and seeing the messy page on this side. It just kind of ruined the book for me. Normally, I don't care. But it really bothered me on this one. So I started putting cardstock <laughs> that I thought kind of went with the picture. And now I absolutely love looking through this book. It's so fun and it feels like it's a lot more fun to, um, to look through and to, and to flip through. So this is the one I did. Um, this is one of the ones I did too. I did this one for February. Now I am intending on I want to paint the edges, but I've got like four or five of these that have uh, color by numbers that I need to paint the edges, and I'm just going to lay them out and do them all at once. And I was just hadn't done that before I did this video. <laughs> but um, of course, that's uh, the king in Robin Hood, right? And that's his little right hand man, and they're counting their coins. Now, this went through a lot of renditions. Oh my gosh, it was a hot mess. Um, I had been using purple in another page somewhere. And so whenever I have extra acrylic paint left over, instead of letting it go to waste, I flip through here and find some worth, something for that color and I paint it. Well, I did not like the color at all <laughs> once I got to looking at this. And I tried everything, but I really need, I, I just, it ended up that I, I have my new Thule Arts now and I had some paint and I just went with this weird violet color. It does call for violet. It's just strange. And the tan, I don't know, the purple. The, these color by numbers call for a lot of purple, I found. Across the board, they all seem to. Um, and then the rest of this is, yeah, it's just all paint pens of various types. Um, I use my Thule Arts sparingly because they're expensive. So I use them where I really need them in small spots. And then some of this bigger stuff, I use my cheaper ones that... Uh, the Arctics that I don't care for, and I'm just um, just to get rid of them. Um, but yeah, so that was finally him, and I think what saved this picture was the blingy gold and the gold trim. I think that saved it, and his blingy ring. 
<laughs> isn't one of my favorites for sure. Um, and then this one I just finished for March, so we'll talk about it then when I finish the background and put another page here. I am not putting the cardstock on while I'm still working on the page uh, because I don't want to get the cardstock just accidentally get paint on it or something. Um, I did put, I do just break that rule with this one though, <laughs> just because I found this cardstock and loved it, and so I stuck it in there. But I'm not done with him yet. Again, I work on these in between other pages, and so it just, it just makes me happy to whip this out. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, this one's done. And when I, then when I, also what happens, the cardstock is keeping the, the pages are perforated right here, and they come out easy. So as you can see, this one is starting to tear but I have cardstock on the other side, and so it's holding it in, it's holding it in together. So yeah, so this is, um, these are all finished pages, and I've put cardstock on this side to, so I love flipping through this. Um, this one was done, this was my first one that I did alcohol markers. Before, all these others had been various paints, but I started doing our alcohol markers here. And I did paint for the wall to make it look sketchy like that, make it look like a rough wall, but everything else was alcohol markers and I really enjoyed it. Um, what I'm looking for, this one, here it is, this one. So this is the one that I did for February. Another one, the other one. I found this and some of my cardstock. I have a lot of cardstock back when I thought I needed all the cardstocks. And this is a great way to use it. I have many, many books of cardstocks that I bought on sales at Michael's or Joann's. And so I have a lot of this stuff. So it's, it's actually the mat that we're working on right now. This is cardstock. So um, I thought this worked out really well for her. And um, as for her here, I did paint the edges black, which is what I like to do, which is what I want to do for all of them. But not quite there yet. She was done, um, this again is, her is all paint pens, Thule Art and other various paint pens. The background is just some ink that I swirled around. This is a distress ink. I, it looks like venomous, um, venomous poison, venomous, whatever that one is. I always forget his names. It's not the grape one, it's the venomous one. And I think that's what that is. Um, then she has some sparkles on her. Now, see, I don't have any stickles. Um, there's, there's, uh, I, I probably will eventually get some, but there's so many. They're kind of spendy and they're really single use. So I decided that when I was, in, I was in the dollar store the other day and I thought, oh, look, they have glitter glue. Why don't I try some of this glitter glue? So I bought this color and I bought this color. This stuff is very sparkly. <laughs> And it's like a dollar twenty-five. However, it is so watery that it just soaks the page, and it doesn't look like it is. You shake it a lot, and then I squeeze it out gently, and it puts a bead down. But then, as you sit there and watch, all the water leaches out of it, and it just soaks the page. And that's why it's a little crinkly. Um, if you can stand that, and if the paper can stand that, and as long as you're not, uh, luckily, I did it before I did anything else, so it wasn't like rewetting this ink and making terrible things happen. Of course, it probably wouldn't matter. Look, I mean, I just put the ink on Messy on purpose. But, and it is sparkly. I mean, it is sparkly. So I I was going to chuck it after I did this video um, because I've used it twice and it did it to both. Now, the other one I used when I used it was in, um, in a page I think you're going to see in this video. Yes. And it bled the colors around it because it's so wet. So I just really don't think I can use this anywhere. I can't think of anything. I want to use something that's so wet. And this one is so sparkly. I mean, look at that. But if I tried it too, and it's the same, they're just really, really wet. But I let this one dry overnight and then another day as well. And um, the sparkle is pretty. It's very pretty. So I'm on the fence about trying that stuff again. Anyway, so that's this book. My Villains Color by Number book. It's a lot of fun. You can get this on Amazon if you're interested in it. It's got great paper, um, a lot of fun. Okay, let me show you what I did next. Okay, this is Morgan O'Brien's fantastic book, Any Day. Sorry, there we go. And um, I am doing this book, this entire book. This is the only book in my collection that I'm like, I'm gonna finish this book. 
Um, and I'm doing this with Coloring with Kate, who is on Instagram and YouTube, and with Axic, Fum Axic Fumbles, who is, uh, both of these are very dear friends of mine, and Axic is on, um, is on Instagram as well, and they're both gorgeous colorists. And they have a hashtag, and that hashtag is color any day. 2024. Anybody can do this. And they're just starting from the beginning and working their way through. There's no set page a month. There's no pace to keep up with. I think they're on the fourth or fifth cup page now. So it's really no pressure. And uh, I love this pay this book. So I'm joining in with that hashtag. So um, if you want to join Kate and my friend Axic Fumbles and um, use their hashtag and color pages in any day. So I had already done, oh, this is the one I did. <laughs> Here's the one I did, right? Right, yes, first page. And I did this like, um, I was channeling Palm Springs, California. <laughs> you know that mid-century mod vibe? She kind of gives me that vibe, um, kind of with the, the some of the, I don't know what it is about her. Maybe it's just her headband, but something about her made me feel like that. And so I did these like browns and, and blue and yellow. I tried to like pick colors that were popular with mid-century modern. And I tried to do a uniform color scheme all the way through instead of my normal like bleh, all the colors. And I really, really had a great time with this one. I really did. It's all alcohol markers, um, which is all I will use in this. I'm not... These Morgan O'Brien books are my are another peaceful retreat for me. I can just use my alcohol markers and have a lot of fun and practice new techniques and practice shading and all the kinds of stuff. And I just don't feel I need to also add pencil. Um, I've got other pictures that can be that fussy, but these pages are just not fussy for me. Now, sneak peek, I know you saw, I did another one, and you'll see this in March. I did get a little more fussy because I did a stencil around it because I started seeing some that Act 6 does and I started thinking I need to step up my game. <laughs> but I probably won't do that for all of them. But that was my page in Annie Day for the hashtag color Annie Day 2024. All right, let me show you another one. Here's a book I love. <laughs> I grabbed this one quite a bit and work in it. I never complete, well, I shouldn't say never. There was one rough night where I did a one page from beginning to end, all in one night. But it usually takes me several days. I do it in between other stuff. And this was the book that started my quest for good um, paint pens because I was struggling with all my paint pens. And again, here's two more that, sorry to bump the camera, that are on the list to get the, the edging painted. But I struggled. And then I finally got the Thule Arts and um, think my life got better. Here's some more struggling I did. I even gave up on this one. I'm not even sure what it is, but the paint pens I was using were terrible. And I don't even know if I can go over and fix it because it's like flaking off and stuff. This one's done, but weird because I didn't have the right paint pens or the right colors. I'm thinking about just gluing these two together so I don't ever have to see them again or worry about them. That's probably what's going to happen. And this one I did last month. Really liked it with the shiny, with the shininess on it. But it was, again, I had not gotten the Thule Arts. I was just starting to get them. I got them like halfway through this guy. So this is Speedy Gonzalez. Andale, andale. And as you can see, I was using crummy acrylic art pens here. But then um, he's got a, his, whatever pen this is really catches the light. Um, but then I started getting um, the Thule art, and I think some of this around here is the Thule art. But a lot of this is still the crummy pens I was using. But I got them done, and I was really happy about that. He's next to Bugs now. I'm currently... Um, did I do those in more? Let me check, because I worked a lot in this one. Yes, I did. All right, let's turn the page. So... I hadn't gotten the Thule Arts, but here I did. I got the Thule Arts, and there's such a big difference in my mind. So the first one I did was this Taz. And I just think it's such better quality. You don't see the streaks. It's much better coverage. Where I used the Thule Art, I only needed one, one layer. Where I, where I didn't use a Thule Art, like I think this brown was not Thule Art. You can see the 
strokes. That was one of those brush, those acrylic paint pens with brushes. I know some of you guys like those because you say, oh, you don't have to prime them. You know, they got a brush tip. Those brush nibs fall apart. They just get, they don't, especially the Arctics, they don't keep up with, and the Arctics look like, when I say Arctics, am I saying the right one? Yes, I think I am. For these here, you know that all of you have, um, we all have these. Uh, you have to do at least two coats. They're not opaque. They're very watery. And the nibs break down. And then you get little bits of foam all over the place. And I just find that they leave streaks like that. That's the brush. Um, I think the qual a paint pen that you have to prime is more of a pain, right? You have to keep the nib clean, but it's such a better product. Uh, the paint is better, the coverage is better. Across the board, every time I get one that I have to prime, it's always better. And um, it doesn't leave those streaks. So all this is the Thule Art, this is the Thule Art. Look how bright that is and how fun it is. It's just really fun. And then I, I use that purple metallic to, to, to go around him. And then this was when I was having a rough day. I immediately went to this one and finished it in one night <laughs> because I needed a break. So um, this is also Taz and Bugs. Now Bugs is my favorite Looney Tunes character. So he is, he's my favorite. So I, I'll do anything with Bugs in it. But I'm just doing these books in order. I don't care who's in the page. They always turn out nice. Um, they are just really well done, these Hatchet Hero books, and they just always turn out, always. So this is a lot of Thule art. This is some of the art text down here where, it, you know, see streaky, but I didn't want to use my Thule art for such big areas. Um, I'm using them more for the smaller areas and not wasting them. Now this book likes a lot of purple. That's a lot of different, in fact, it called for even more shades and I consolidated some of it because I didn't have that many shades of purple. I don't know if you guys have found that these color by numbers use a lot of purple, but wow, I've had purple in all of the pages I've done so far, quite a bit actually. I mean, look, there's purple in this one and, and I expect some purple, but there seems to be in a lot of these, a lot of purple. But that's anyway, is my Taz, I'm trying to get the glare off here for you, is my Taz and Bugs and some guy trying to put <laughs> the brain scanner thing on Bugs, but his ears won't let him. <laughs> that's about as angry as you ever see Bugs. He's usually just laughing. He's so smarmy, I love him. Anyway, so that's what I did all three of those in February. In the Looney Tunes Tomb 2, I highly recommend these Hatchet Hero books, and especially if you're a child of the 80s like I am, 70s and 80s, you love, I mean, you. I know all these scenes. I saw these cartoons with these scenes in it. I saw this cartoon, you know? I mean, I saw this cartoon, I saw that cartoon. So I remember these cartoons. And so that's why this book is really nostalgic for me. And I absolutely love it. There's a tomb one as well, which I also have. I just, for some reason, work on this one all the time. <laughs> all right, let me show you what I did next. Gosh, here's another book I love. This is the only travel around the whatever book that I have of Rita Berman's. I don't have the Europe one, which I would like to get. I don't have the Africa one, which I would really like to get. This is the only one I have, and I'm making myself color more in it first. And I have colored quite a few in here. I love this book. Everything, every page is fantastic. I think even after seeing flip throughs of the other ones, <clears throat> excuse me, that this one would still be my favorite. But what I did was I got into Chinese New Year with this one. And what I did was these two pages. Now I started with this one. And this is a lot of acrylic paint pen. Paint pen. <clears throat> I got my tool yards and I really wanted to use them. So I did this and it's all, uh, in fact, a lot of you did this page for February for Chinese New Year. I did what a lot of you did is I blacked out the background, which meant I covered over all of Rita Berman's drawn in fireworks. But I took a picture of it to see what they looked like first. And then I used black acrylic paint. I use this pavement black, matte black by Apple Barrel. It's my favorite. It's usually hanging around out here because I use it all the time. And then the rest of this is, uh, this, the dragon is actually pencil, believe it or not. And I believe it is, 
I never write down what pencils I use. <laughs> I never do. Because <sighs> I don't use pencil very often. It's probably my Spear Farbens, though, it looks like it, which are a budget pencil. They're by um, Dippy Fabric Castell, Spear Farbens, and I really like them. I use them a lot. And so is the ring. Now, oh, the ring I know is Polychromos. So this might be all polys. Although I only have 24 of them and I don't know if I have those color greens. But I love to do, um, I, have a, I have a color combo that works to make metal in the polys. So those might, that might be polychromos, although it's not very good. I, wasn't, I was really wanting to focus on the colorful things. So I, <laughs> and since there was so little of the ring that you see, I didn't really focus on it. And I didn't, I didn't really do work very hard on that. <laughs> but I made, I wanted him to have a really matte red. And this again is uh, a paint pen. And that might be Thule Art because it's absolutely perfect. I might have splurged and did my Thule Art. I was so excited when I got him. I got the Earth set. Um which means that, hmm, that wouldn't be this because the earth set doesn't have a true red in it. I just have all of my uh, paint pens in a big bin, but I have the Thule Arts in their box still. I want to get other sets. The earth set's very muted, earthy colors. And I absolutely love it. Disney Megs suggested that I try that one first. I'm so glad she did. It's a fabulous set. And now I need more. <laughs> I want to get like a set with more primary colors in it, which I think they have. Um, but they're spending, so I have to budget them out. The gold here is, again, um, that this gold here is the Kuretake Gonzai Tom B gold starry colors, the watercolor, um, that gold. I love that gold. This, again, is that Brutus Monroe aqua pigment. I thought I'd try it again. I had to do two layers again, and it's still kind of thin and sketchy. I, I, you know, unless you use it for splattering, I'm not really sure what that stuff is good for. And then this, I took, I looked at how she drew fireworks, and I tried to mimic it. I didn't do a great job, but I think you get the idea they're fireworks. And I used um, acrylic paint pen on this. And for that, I did use the Thule's, a lot of the Thule's. And then I used some others too that I had. I have some that I'm just trying to use up. So that was that. Well, well then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, I, why don't I just do this one too? And I had seen a video where someone, uh, a colorist said to, a fast way to color is to do two at once, to do both sides and do them in the same palette, just different ratios, which is what I did. Um, this yellow is new. This yellow is actually crayon. Um, smoothed out with the Gamsol. Gamsel Gamsel, which is this. You should see my desk, it's so cluttery. Gamsel, and then I use a blending stump. In fact, it was this one. And I dip it in there, boop, and then I melt the, the wax and it smooths it all out. So that's a great way to use crayon. Now some colors smooth out better than others. This yellow smooths really well. Um, and then when you get, when you wanna to switch to another color, you just take this, you could take it to a sanding block and sand off this paper. It's just paper, but I didn't have one. So I used, I don't see it around me, but I used a nail file. I just rubbed it on the nail file and until I got it, cause it's just paper, it's just paper. And so that way you get all the color off and it's all clean and ready to start anew. And you can make it any shape you want by sanding it. And you can get them in all sizes. I got those um, at an art store, but you can get them off Amazon really easy. But I started, I, I thought, well, yeah, I'll follow that colorist's advice. And so um, I went over here and I used that Brutus Monroe penny color in the fish. I also used the gold in the fish. Um, there is some pencil in their faces. The rest is all... The black is black. This is probably Spearfarben or Polly's for this part around here. And uh, looking to see if I wrote it down, probably didn't. And then the rest of this is all acrylic paint pen. Is it my favorite page? No, but it's sparkly and 
it's all right. And it's another page. It was very cool, like, because I don't have any patience. So often when I'm using a wet medium, I'll keep working it because I'm too impatient to let it dry. And then bad things happen. So this way, while something was wet, I could just go jump over here and work on here. And then while this was drying, I jumped back over here. And it was so satisfying. And then when I was done, I had two pages. So I highly recommend that. Um, for those of you, you can, if you do PDFs, you can do two PDFs. If you have a book, you can do both sides. I know it feels like, I know we all say, oh, double page spreads, they're so hard. But it really, when it's two different pieces, you don't get bored of it. You just jump over to the next one and then jump over to this one. And, and I really, I, I liked it for what it was. I don't, I haven't tried it yet with two full size, because this is a small book. But um, I'm willing to try I'm willing to try. It's like having um, several whips that you're working on at once, which I do as well. All of my pages are usually whips until the very end of the month, and then I wrap them all up so I don't get bored. But these two I worked on simultaneously. Yep, so that's my pages in Rita Berman for this month. All right, I have more. All right, this was one of those untouched books I did. Um, I have all of Denise Kletz and love them all. Uh, gnomes in the Forest. The gnome one is my favorite. No, it's Birds in the Forest. It's Gnomes yeah. in the Neighborhood. Gnomes in the Neighborhood. That's my favorite one. Um, I thought the Mermaid one would be my favorite one, but that Gnomes one is really delightful. Uh, the Mermaid one's a close second. Uh, fairies in Wonderland, I still have not colored in, but I that's on the plate for March so that I can have a color in a page in all of Denise's, and this one was yet untouched. Um, it's not my most favorite one because I find a lot of the pages are kind of similar, um, and there's just a, I mean, it's all birds, of course. I got it to complete the set. Um, I still will color it, but uh, birds are okay. These birds are great because they're cartoony, but I do get tired of birds. But I wanted to break into this one, and Disney Megs approached me and wanted to do, to do a buddy, and I'm like, I need to get into this book. And she did too. So we chose for Valentine's Day this one. Now this is the other page that I use this really watery glitter glue from the dollar store. And as you can see, um, it just, it smeared things wherever I used it. Um, now this blue is a different one. So the pink, is here and yes it got really watery it crinkled the page because there's no other water medium on here this is alcohol markers this is crayon this is crayon that's where i cut some gamsel on the page before i laid the crayon down so it that's what happens you want to be careful with that gamsel make sure you don't accidentally have it on your hand <laughs> but all this is crayon which made a fun background and an easy background but this is all alcohol marker. And then I wanted to put the glittery stuff on and see, it's really glittery and sparkly. We're looking at the pink stuff, the blue I'll show you in just a second. But it it just made the page so wet. It smeared some ink right here. See where it smeared the ink? I just don't know if it's usable. I mean, my page is really crinkly and that's just from this stuff. It ran all over. Now the, uh, the blue, the blue, is this. These were also from the dollar store. Look, I don't even, not even a name on them. They're just some glue and glitter in them. They are not as wet. Um, I got these at the same time because I just wanted to try these supplies out because for a buck, I was thinking, could I get something that was shiny? It's not going to be a stickles, but is it going to be shiny? And the blue is really nice. It's not near as watery. It's a little watery. I got a little watery up in here, but nothing like like these crafter square ones so if you want to try out dollar store glitter don't get this get these little ones they're better and there's not a lot in there i mean there's some you can see it's it's in there but i thought it was real pretty um that's the blue there now i put it on top of alcohol ink so i already colored it i knew this this is not I mean, you're going to have to color something first and then put this on there because this is not pigmented enough to color the page. I tried it up here to see what it would do and see it's just 
glitters, just turns into loose glitter, but it doesn't come off, which is nice. The glue in it's really strong. So I would use those again. I think that's pretty. But the pink, uh, see how the blue is so much more sparkly than the pink? The pink, there's not enough payout to deal with all that water. So I think that just made up my mind. I'm gonna chuck these after this video so that I don't get tempted to use them again. So don't buy these. But if you wanna try cheap glitter, this works. Glitter glue. So the rest is crayon. Um, there's a little gold something, something. I don't know what that is. Probably a pen or a, maybe probably some, maybe uh, it looks like a paint pen. I think it's a gold paint pen. And that's it. It was very simple. Now, let me show you Disney Megs. Here's Disney Megs. And the reason I'm laughing is because we pretty much kind of chose the same colors for our birds. Um, very interesting. <laughs> So our birds, we were both seeing, you know, blue and greens for the boy, pink for the girl, and um, typical, but, you know, I thought, I like those colors. I didn't do it because I was trying to be uh, gender stereotypical, but I do like the colors. I like pink and blue. So thank you, Disney, so much for helping me get into this book. This is my first page out of this book, so I'm so excited. I finally don't have an uncolored Birds in the Forest book. And this page was so much fun for Valentine's Day. Just a lovely, sweet little page. All right, I've got more. And then my dear friend Tammy at Tammy Colors 2 um, wanted to do a buddy, and I believe she hadn't colored in this book yet either. I had not colored in this book. And this is Diane Dufour, and I absolutely love her. I really do. This is my favorite book of hers, and the only book I have of hers. Um, I think this is the one I, I don't need the others. I really just like this one so much, but I love her style. And it's such a fabulous book. I mean, every single person is so jolly and happy. I think when I look at it, it just makes it me laugh. Look how joyful they are. The characters are just so fun and playful and joyful, and it's not too intricate, and it's just wonderful. Well, this is the page that Tammy and I did. Now, this is very different from what I normally do. I don't know if you noticed, but it's um, very pastel-y. I'm trying. And this is largely a lot of pencil, So, which is another strange thing. So um, I was trying, once again, to use my Albert Durer's. So these are new to me, these Albert Durer watercolor pencils, and I'm still not great with them, but I'm trying. So <laughs> I'm working really hard. Actually, I'm right now working on a page, a henna Carl's on page using them, and I think I'm finally starting to get it. But boy, they have a learning curve. Um, so this is all Albert Durer, and it wasn't great. So I used some paint pen to, to add more depth in, into the snow. Uh, the trees all Albert Durer. Um, this is all too. This is the, the trees are all. Um, the background looks like it might be as well. I think it all is. I think I was really trying to do this whole page in that because I wanted it to be super soft. So I use those Albrecht Durs everywhere. Now, I don't know what happened to her face. It got kind of weird. But the monkeys, um, the monkeys, these monkeys that are in these hot springs in Japan are white with pink, with kind of red on them and stuff. I didn't really look, I looked up a picture and they all had snow on them. So I tried to make it look like I used some uh, white, acrylic paint pen to just try to give the illusion of snow just to try to make a white monkey without leaving it white you know <laughs> I put some coloring in their face and some kind of shadowing in there um, I actually like the way Tammy did hers better uh, uh, Tammy's page is gorgeous I'll show you in a minute but yeah all this is the pencils and that's the pencils I went back over the I activated them I went back over them dry in a lot of places to add shading I didn't get as much shading as I wanted out of them. Um, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I'm still not getting, they're still not where I want them to be. They're still not my go-to medium for sure. 
uh, but I want them to be that. Now I wanted her hair to sort of mimic the tree. Um, I fussed around with her hair a lot. It looked very different. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept fussing with it and fussing with it. This whole page was difficult. It was very uh, forced. And I, I don't like forced pages. Um, they usually tend to look forced. Like they're just, I tried too hard. And this one could have been a lot easier than it was. Especially if I just, I mean, this is a single sided book. Just use my alcohol markers. But I really wanted to challenge myself. I eventually ended adding up, uh, I didn't like her tail at all, what I did. It had pinks and greens in it and it just didn't work. So I used a uh, metallic uh, felt pen and put, just made her, made it gold. And then just so that it didn't look too weird, I put some gold in her, in her hair doodads and some gold on that fish. But it does just kind of go, whoa, gold, where there's no other gold anywhere else. Um, so yeah, this page was difficult for me. Um, didn't quite come together the way I saw it in my head, sort of, the tree. The tree looks pretty much exactly the way I saw it in my head. Everything else didn't quite work, but I was, I'm tr I was trying to work with a medium that I just am not good with yet. And um, if I turn this light off, would it be easier? No, that's too shadowy and stuff. But let me turn it down a bit. But yeah. Yeah, let's look at Tammy's. Now Tammy's is just gorgeous. Um, her pages are always pretty. And I love the way she did her monkeys. I love the way she did the water and the mermaid. It's just, it's just great. It's really great. It, you could tell she had a plan in mind and it worked where I just went element by element and didn't have a total plan in my mind. Tammy really, her, her page really works. And it's just gorgeous. So thank you so much, Tammy, for doing a buddy with me. I love doing buddies with you and always. And thank you for getting me into this book. I, I, now I'm ready to do another one. It's it's in my out pile. Um, it's just, I mean, their faces, just 100%, they're having a good time. And, and I just, I think they're so funny. It just makes me laugh. And since these are like mermaids around the world, um, they're all different uh, nationalities and all different cultures and different ethnicities. So that's, it makes it a lot of fun. This is a very interesting book and a great book to have in your collection. Okay, I have more. Let's talk Tropagoth. This is the only Carla McGanya book I have, and I love it so much. I'm so glad it's the only one I have because it's fantastic. I definitely want more, but this one's keeping me entertained. And I am coloring along with Christina's Art Corner. She uh, has a hashtag every month, and she shows all the finished pages. Now, I did not get my page finished in time. So it didn't end up on her reel. Mine, mine often, mine kind of don't, <laughs> uh, because I get mine done like by the third, by the very last day, and she's already filmed her, her reel by then. So I often don't get mine in there. But um, this, I've also skipped a few months. I don't do the same book every month, every month, every month, because I then it becomes like something I have to do. So I, I bounce around. I feel, I feel comfortable in skipping months, and I've skipped a few months. But it was time for me to get back into this. See, I've done some of these, and um, this one was my favorite one in the book that I've done. But this month was this one, and this one was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I made some changes. Sorry, that was really loud. I made some changes to this. <laughs> that, um, I thought... She had short, I thought it was weird that Carla gave a girl short hair. She never gives a girl short hair. But I was really certain that this was part of the shell chair. <laughs> it looked to me like some kind of an oyster shell or something. It didn't look like hair. It looked flat. And so I made it part of the chair. Now looking at it, it's pretty obvious it's not part of the chair. But for some reason, I saw it as the headrest. And I gave her this short, like, 20s flapper girl hair <laughs> And, and then I thought this was like just some bobbles and I made them the same color as her hair um, just in case it was like a little weird ponytail. But 
I did not see this as her hair and everyone else did. <laughs> so my girl's got short hair. I also did not see her as having any other clothes on. Like everyone kind of gave her a bodice here, but this isn't connected. So what I thought was it was some sort of elaborate, like cover the boobies strap, go down to a skirt thing. And the other strap you just can't see because this strap was drawn in. That strap was there, I didn't add it. So I made her very risque. <laughs> I don't know how she's holding those things up, but she is. And then I thought she was more like a mermaid. So I gave her green skin and green uh, makeup. And I made her bird with lots of the greens. I did a lot of the green, orange, pink thing. I kind of like that triad there, a little bit of blue. Gave her some green, green and blue stockings. And then in the original page, it's just her sitting here with her bird and this on this, uh, what looks like a giant upside down coconut shell. So I did this, I did the rest of the scenery. I put in um, the background is just some, no, is it distressed inks or is it? I think it is, um, nope, it's King Art gel sticks that I use the green, yellow and blue. Of King Art gel sticks. And then the bottom there, I just use an alcohol marker for this color, the, the tanny color. All this is alcohol markers. I'm not sure if I said that. And then I did different color. And I saw someone else that had done this. You do different color browns, speckly, and then you put like a white dot in them. And for some reason, it makes it look like sand. And I don't know why, but it works. Looks like little rocks in the sand. And then I did the water. The water again is some greens and blues alcohol marker. And then this is a white Posca pen making the waves. So she's on the beach, my girl is, because she's a mermaid. And um, so there she is. Now, I scrolled in too far. Uh, I like to give Carla McGonigal so her girl's a lot of bling. I used, I did it a couple times using metallic paint and stuff, but now I'm following what other people do because that's what I am, a follower. And look, I just use white Posca and make these little crosses to signify sparkly, and I think that's better. And then lots of little Posca accents everywhere, and that just makes it kind of sparkle where it should. I like her. I like her a lot. She's a lot of fun. I, when I miss a few months doing this hashtag, I forget how fun this book is and how fun it is to, I don't know what it is about Carla's drawing. And I've heard other colorists say this too. It's just fun to color. I don't know if it's all the curves she puts in her, in her characters. There's just something really fun about her, her illustrative style. And it's just, um, they're just really, really fun to color. And so this month's is the woman with the tiger. I know that you've seen this in a few other uh, color, a few other colorists have shown this to you in their finished pages, but we're doing the woman, oh, wouldn't that, she, she may have already been done, I don't know, I missed some months, but she would be a lot of fun. She's naughty. Um, all these girls are naughty, naughty in a good way. This is the one we're doing this month for March. Um, I definitely want to do it. Definitely, definitely. I heard someone say they wanted to do her like Wilma Flintstone, which makes sense because she's in this like animal skin short dress. <laughs> I think that's great. And then her little tiger. This will be fun. All right. I've got more. So I toyed with showing you this one because I'm working on the page next to it, so I haven't done the frame, so it's still a little messy, but um, I did it in February, so I'm showing it now. Um, this is Le Grand Classique Tomb 2, 10, Tomb 2, Tomb 10. It's the only Le Grand Classique I have. Um, this is from the Coloriage Mystère line from the Disney. Uh, this is also, you can get in Lyrica. I don't know if I said that before, but the Hatchet Hero books that I color out of these, these color by numbers, they're all off of Lyrica.com, L-I-R-E-K-A.com, and French site, and the shipping is free to the United States. This is, there's tons and tons of them. This is the only one I have. Um, I watched a lot of flip throughs. I knew I could only afford one at the time. And this one I really liked. And it's true. I really do like this one. I like every page in it. But I just started it. This, so this was my first page in this book. This was an untouched book. And as you can see, I'm working on this guy. 
but this is what I did, and I'm so proud of this one. Now, this one will have a border, but the border is gonna match this one too. So I'm waiting to finish this, and then I'll paint so you won't see all this mess. So pretend like that mess isn't there. And this um, is Hades, right? What is this movie? <laughs> Can you guys tell me? Because I never saw it, and I don't know what it is. Um, I This one worked out well because I had the Thule Arts. The Thule Arts are there. Now, in this big stuff, no. And as you can see, it's streaky. I use the Arctic back there. They just suck. <laughs> but they cover. I mean, it took a few layers, and they're not pretty. But um, whatever. This is the star attraction here, and I use them on her and on him. So um, I, th I think it turned out really well. Again, these Hero books are drawn so well. Uh, that they just come out looking great. Now, some people choose to not color the shading in, and so where it's darker, they just color it all the same, and it looks more flat and more cartoony and more straight coloring, and it's really great. I think uh, Spicy Cat Colors does that, and they look great. So you don't have to, if you don't have all the colors or you just don't feel inclined to do so, you could make it all one color, not do all the little shadings that they have. However, I often don't know that that is shading, so I just follow what the book tells me. The book is the boss of me right now, and I tell I do what the book tells me because I don't know what I'm coloring. <laughs> I start in one corner, and I go around. Now, like here, here's one in progress. I started down here, and then as I find a color, I try to do all of that color because knowing me, I'll put the pen away and never remember what color I used. So I try to do that. So that's kind of, and then because the colors I chose ended up being the background, it kind of shaped out who this is. So I kind of, now I have an idea of what I'm coloring, where here I really didn't. I started in this corner. I kind of got that I had a girl going on. I didn't know this part for a while because I was down here and I'm like, what in the world am I coloring? But again, a lot of purple. What the heck is up with all the purple? I just don't have enough purples. So I decided that um, when I do find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I want to get the purple set of <laughs> Tule Yards. I don't know if they have just a purple. It's probably purples and blues or something like that. The blue set for sure. Um, but the purples and the reds. Anyway, what do you think? I really think this one turned out great. And it's such a difference when you have a good acrylic paint pen. It's a game changer. I'll show you this. You'll see this again in March when I finish this one and I'll have the borders painted in. All right. Let's see. I think I just have one more. Nope, a couple more. Be right back. And then we have Lulu Mayo. Now I have a love-hate relationship with Lulu Mayo. I love her and her artistry and everything she does. These pages are brilliant. The paper is so tricky. So many things don't work on this paper. Um, it's crazy. Things that'll work anywhere else won't work here. It's just, it's, it's got, it's very slippery. It's a weird paper and water mediums tend to not work. Um, I've not been very successful with using watercolor mediums on this. There's a lot of different kinds of pencils that don't work. It's just rough. I have been, Polychromos is my go-to pencils and they work, but I'm not, I'm not going to do a whole page in pencil. You know, I got, I got arthritis. So I've had a hard time. So I tend to not get into these books. Now I bought this book because it was on sale for just like, I mean, I kid you not, it was like $3. And then I got it and I was like, what in the world? Even for $3, what am I doing with it? I'm not going to color llamas. Well, Amy from Amy Ward Art, uh, we connected and we decided to do a buddy out of this. And she was going to help me get into this book finally, break into it and see if I can really color in this book. And I'm so grateful for her because that's exactly what we did. And we did this page. Now, she finished hers first and it's fantastic. And let me show it to you, it's right here. It's great. And I mean, you obviously, she's colored in Lulu Mayo before. She knows what she's doing. And um, she whipped that thing out and sent it to me. And it was like, God, that's great. Um, I still don't know what I'm doing with these dang llamas. <laughs> and thank you so much, Amy. So then I had to start mine. I hadn't even started mine yet. I was dreading it. So then I got it and I was like, okay, 
I'm, I know that most of everything I own doesn't work in this book. So what I'm gonna do is use my Tule Art pens. And that's what I did. So I use paint pens. And I, um, everything on this is paint. This pink, the background's paint, everything's paint. And for the llamas, since, I don't know, they're white, they're brown, I don't know. I just did the outlines. And I did the outlines in two different colors just to make them a little more interesting. So this one is pink and yellow, and this one is dark green and light green. And the baby is pink and a lighter pink and yellow. And then I just, I basically used the same five pens for the entire page. And then I thought, then I looked over at this page, and I'm like, what if I did that thing? You know, that magic thing where you work on two pages at once. And then I'd have two pages done in this book that I should have never bought. And I did it that way. So as paint was drying over here, I went over here and I used the same pens. I tell you, I had the most fun. I'm now grateful for this book. It was so much fun. And I normally am not into I don't know what to do with these white fluffy things. I don't know how to color them. I'm not really interested. And I would never do like this type of a page, just kind of wallpapery type of thing. It's not really a scene, but I had so much fun. So then because this one had a black background, I decided that I was gonna paint this, which was a labor of love. And um, so I painted the background black so that it would go with this. Now on hindsight, I probably should have not used matte and used a more glossy black because this is glossy. So there's a, on, on camera, you don't see much of a difference. In person, you can really tell this is matte. But I think they work together. I mean, they're the exact same colors. And it looked like they were the same characters. I mean, this this looks like one of these. I mean, they look like they were like this was a like this was a cutout of that is what it looked like. So I just did them as a double page like that. And it came out just as fast as if I, as if I had done one because while I was waiting for things to dry, I was over here doing this, waiting for that to dry over here doing this. So I loved it and I loved the color palette. Um, I've been playing around with green and pink. Haven't really hit it yet ex until I got to this page. I really think I like the shades here. But it's also because I used my Thule Art Earth Tone Set and I used just that. Um, if you use a curated set, in theory, all those colors should work together really well. And I didn't branch out and use colors from other acrylic paint pens like I've done in every other page. So just making myself limit myself to one brand and one, not even really one brand, one little box of curated colors the, they already go together. It's kind of brainless. And so the without knowing it, I picked tones that work together because they were all in the same set. Does that make sense? So when I myself go to my bucket of mixed acrylic arts pens from all kinds of different companies and I'm handpicking colors, there's a good likelihood I'm going to pick colors that don't go well together. And that's what's been happening for me. I hadn't really picked the, got the perfect green and pink together. And this, I think, works. But again, they're all from the same set, so duh. But I, I just, I, this is really close to being one of my favorite pages this month. I mean, I, I don't see, I like everything about it. And I can't, it took Amy to get me into this. And I'm so, so grateful because... Now it makes me, especially knowing that I can just whip out my paint pens and deal with this frustrating paper and just do that. Now her Kawaii Tarot book, which I've colored in a lot, has different paper. It's not this really weird slick stuff. Um, you can use wet media on this. Wet media on this just sort of disperses. The pigment just sort of flies away. It's weird. But look, I'm, I'm now like not, I'm not interested in this book because of finding a medium that works and having someone, a buddy, help me get into it. So that is the beauty of buddy colors. So if you've never buddy colored with somebody, just ask. Anybody will say yes. None of us are going to say no. Just ask. I mean, the only time I would say no is if I've already hit that five a month limit and I can't fit it in, but I'll do it in the next month. That'd be great. So um, just reach out anytime you want. You guys pretty much know the books I have. Um, yeah. So that was good. Now, with those two out of the way, I have one left, and it's probably my favorite of the month. Let's look at it. All right, finally, the very last page. This is in my most precious book, my most coveted book. Um, this is Realm of the Gods, or as some people have had it translated as Season of the Gods. 
Uh, my Google Translate said Realm of the Gods. Um, Portrait of the Gods, I've also seen, but it is um, a Korean book. Got it off of Book Outlet. Um, I don't know where you can get it now. <laughs> uh, I think you can get it probably off of Etsy or something. And this, um, yeah, for me, it says Realm of the Gods Coloring Book, a fantasy world where you meet living gods is what this is. And it's Korean mythology. The artist is Kim Jin Young, who is also Gom Gom E. You can find uh, Kim, you can find Jin Young there at, on uh, in various places on Instagram. There's the Instagram and there's the website. So here's a way you can take a screenshot of this if you're looking for this book and maybe see if you can find it. Um, again, this is Korean mythologies. You've seen, I have done some pages in this. Um, in this book, you get the colored image first and then you can color it. And this is what I did with that image. Um, I use various paints and pencils and washi tape. And that's the way this, this book goes. Colored image and then finished image. And aren't they gorgeous? The paper is divine. Of course, it's double-sided, so you don't want to use alcohol markers. But I love having this colored image because I often can't tell what's going on sometimes. Or like, I don't know, like, where does the, what is that fuzzy stuff right there on the back of his hand? And I can look and see, it's unclear what that fuzzy stuff is on the back of the hand. But um, at least sometimes the coloring helps straighten it out for you so you know. And then the smaller portraits are side by side like this. And I like to translate the stories so that I know the stories that I'm coloring. Um, and it's just... It's just absolutely gorgeous. There is one section that's mostly just these odd portraits. Um, it'll probably be the last section I do because I'm more into the scenes that tell the stories. Like, oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that great? And you can see the finished one here and then the colored one. Isn't that wonderful? So I also did this one at one time uh, last year. This is a story of two sisters that sneak out one night when it's hot to go down to the river to bathe their feet. And there's this little creature um, called a shiwe or something like that. And it and he steals your shoes. <laughs> so that little creature is stealing their shoes. <laughs> this one was done mostly in... in um, oh, I use the Ohuhu watercolor markers. And that's when I realized I really didn't like those at all. But... Um, so there's, that's mostly watercolor markers, markers there. And then this is one I did mostly in polychromos. And then paint, all this. Is, and this is Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Ink. And then here's some gouache down here. Um, and that is the story of a princess who met and fell in love with someone her father didn't like. So he turned her into half fish, half woman. And now she guards the the harbors and blows either a fair wind or an ill wind to the ships, depending on her mood. <laughs> um, so see, I don't actually usually match the color scheme. Um, sometimes I try, or I at least use it as a starting off point. I got, I kind of, I kind of went way off over here, but I knew I wanted her shirt to be orange. So I kind of went from there. And the one I did this month is right here. Now this is the original, and then this is what I did. So I wanted to make the bottom patterned, and so I did, I used washi tape. And see, her, her accessories there are patterned, and so I used washi tape, and I cut the washi tape. Um, I just laid it on there, and then just sort of cut around, and lift it up, and cut around, and lift it up, made sure I was cutting along the lines. The rest of it is all polychromos because they're my very favorite pencil and I wanted to use them in my favorite book. And then the background is interesting. <laughs> I watched a video uh, on this distress uh, resist medium that you put it on something and anything put over it resists it. So. I thought that's what I was grabbing out of my stash because I know I have it somewhere, but I can't find it. And I grabbed a glossing medium, a medium that you put over the top of stuff to make glossy. And I couldn't figure out why my 
I had a little circle tool that I was dipping into it and putting in here because I wanted it to resist the ink to make it look like snow. Couldn't figure out why it was sliding around all over the place. And then it was so sticky. And then I looked at the label. So I let it sit for two days to totally dry because I couldn't get it off now. And then I took some Distress ink of three different kinds of yellows and I just kind of rubbed them in and sure enough, they didn't go over that glossy stuff. Now that glossy stuff is still sticky. So what's gonna happen right after this is I'm gonna spray this and fix it and then that'll keep it from being sticky. Um, someone asked what I use for spray. I use uh, a brand, I use Krylon, um, a line called Kamar, K-A-M-A-R. You can find it on Amazon. If you look up Kamar, uh, fixing spray. Um, what I use is the varnish, Kamar varnish, but there's also one that's actually made for artwork. Uh, the varnish leaves kind of a little shine to it, and I like it. Um, there's also a workable fixative. That's something different. I don't have that. That's something you like lay something like eyeshadow or fluffy, something that comes off easy. You spray it, let it dry, and then you can continue working. This is for the very end of the page. You can't work over it once you spray it with this stuff. But the story of this lady is, um, this is, now Google Translate gave me so many different stories. So it's, she's either, she's the plum sister-in-law or the plum wife. And this is either a symbolic, this is General Dong, and he's either symbolic of winter or he's an actual liaison she had on the slide. Um, she's either hugging him to say goodbye because he's dying and say goodbye to winter. It's either symbolic that way or there's some sort of mythology around, you know, this plum wife running off to go meet General Dong. And for some reason they made him into this great beast. I could not find anything on the web about it because I wanted to find more. And this little blurb you know, sometimes it says plum wife, sometimes it says plum sister-in-law. It says he's General Dong, and it doesn't say anything about what they're doing. So it was a hard one to understand. I get the impression that this is not her partner, <laughs> that she's kind of, you know, but she's either saying goodbye to, it's, it's mythological, it's Beauty and the Beast, but I get the impression that she's already married, probably. Anyway, um... The, the most interesting thing about this picture is that my friend Axic Fumbles, she did this page too. <laughs> they, I guess I don't know if Axic is a she. I'll say they, sorry. They did this page too. <laughs> and it's so strange in such a, a rare book for two colorists that are friends to be doing the exact same page in the exact same month. I don't have, I didn't get their permission to put their page up here, but please go to the website and go to their IG. Here's their Instagram and look at their page. They did a very, they did a different color scheme. It's absolutely gorgeous. I was halfway through done with mine when I saw theirs. And so I, um, and I knew I was on a completely different color palette and everything. So I was really excited to finish it so that we could, you know, talk about each other's and stuff. And we did. And we had a really good time with it. And we talked about the differences and the similarities and how we did what. And it's just, it was, again, another reason to do a buddy color. That was an unintentional buddy color and very, very strange one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's a one in a million chance. But we both did it for uh, the hashtag uh, diverse couples color 24. And that was um, that was Sam Ways, right? I will find out. I think I have that in my book. Let's look in my book. That's what the book's for. I didn't write. I didn't add that one that I was going to do it, and I ended up doing it anyway. I don't think I knew about that hashtag till half halfway through February. I will find out who hosted that hashtag and put it here. And that hashtag was uh, to color a couple that were not traditional uh, human man and woman. So something different. So this is what I did. And this was my favorite page of the month. It was something I worked on all month, a little by little. It is pencil, so it took a lot. I would take it to work and I would do like just this paw and then just these legs. And it took a long time for me. Um, 
but I love the effect. I love how I made it look, this little, this little transparent piece. Now, so they have flowers and actually put their, put, kept the flowers on theirs. I forgot, but by the time it was done, I was, I didn't want to screw it up. I liked the way it was. And I like that it looks transparent. I did that just by using a lighter shade of what I was using here, here to make it look transparent. And, um, I'm just really proud of this page. <laughs> I hope you like it. And if you know the plum the the mythology of the plum wife, let me let me know because I'm so curious. This is such an emotional and poignant page. I mean, look at his expression on his face. I just and you know, and his he's kneeling. It's like and he has an arrow in his back. So I just want to know what the story is. Um and if anybody can read Korean, I mean, Google Translate gives me something different every time I read, every time I put that in there, but there's that. So if you can read Korean, I would love to know what that really says. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today and for looking at all of my pages. I am always happy to do this video. I'm always happy to do all the videos. Uh, I love having you here in my living room with me in my little cabin in the woods with Jack sleeping on the couch behind me and I get to spend some time with you and you keep me company. All right, thank you so much and I will see you in my next video. Be safe.